Next is alkynes. <clears throat> Alkynes, all of you know, have in the general formula CN H2N minus 2. That is the empirical formula for alkynes. And the first member is ethyne. CH triple bond CH. Ethyne. That is the so called uh, acetylene. Acetylene gas. Ethyne. That is the first member. And the speciality of alkynes, known to all, it undergo sp hybridization. This is sp hybridized carbon. There is carbon carbon triple bond connected to the two hydrogen atom like this. This one out of the triple bond, one is sigma bond, and the two are pi bonds. Okay. So how comes the configuration? How is the electronic distribution comes? So carbon undergoing sp hybridization so one hybrid orbital this way and one hybrid orbital this way and here hydrogen makes a bonding so this is s orbital of hydrogen and sp orbital of carbon makes a sigma bond and here the second carbon having the hybrid orbital make a sigma bond like this here comes the next to hydrogen so this is carbon carbon sigma bond this is carbon hydrogen sigma bond and this is carbon hydrogen sigma bond now we have two p orbitals vacant we have two p orbitals which are available for sidewise overlapping not vacant for the sidewise lateral or lateral overlapping so this make a pi bond say for example p y orbital say for example p y orbital they make a pi bond and that is one pi bond right there is one more p orbital free there is one more p orbital free that is let it be a c p x orbital the p x orbital also free like this and they make a pi bond and that will be the second pi bond let it be p x orbital p x orbital that makes a pi bond so it comes like the hybrid orbital make a sigma bond, Px make a pi bond, Py make a pi bond like this. And overall we can find there is a cylindrical electron density across the carbon-carbon sigma bond. So you can understand hydrogen, carbon, carbon, hydrogen. Here we can assume a cylindrical electron symmetry which is like this. The cylindrical electron symmetry we can assume all around the carbon carbon sigma bond there is pi electron density. So it is electron rich center but rather it is more symmetrical. That is why for certain reaction we need to have some special reagent to polarize that uh, triple bond. Hope you get the picture. This is what about alkynes. Let us have a talk on methods of preparation of alkynes methods of preparation of alkynes number one from calcium carbide number one from calcium carbide how to get the calcium carbide it's very simple you can see the reactions very popular reaction calcium carbonate upon heating you get calcium oxide and carbon dioxide now that calcium oxide treated with the carbon cock red hot condition you get calcium carbide and calcium carbide upon hydrolysis you get calcium hydroxide and acetylene gas it is CaC2 what is this C2 Ca2 plus and C2 2 minus what is that Cc triple bond 1 minus here 1 minus here upon hydrolysis you can see H2 1 hydrogen 1 hydrogen it will turn CH triple bond CH you get a alkyne ethyne. So calcium carbide calcium acetylide basically upon hydrolysis you get acetylene gas preparation number 1. Now preparation number 2 from vicinal halide you can prepare alkyne. From vicinal halide, you can prepare alkyne. 
a vicinal dibromide treated with the KOH followed by treating with the sodium amide. A vicinal dibromide. You see the reaction CH2Br. CH2Br when treated with the an alcoholic solution of potassium hydroxide. See what is the reaction happening. Simple to understand. K plus with the Br minus it is out as KBr. Right. And OH minus with one of the hydrogen out as water. And here you will get a double bond. It returns vicinal, I mean vinyl bromide. CH2 double bond CHBr. Now this is pretty more stable. So we are making use of another reagent for a better reaction. This is treated with the sodium amide NaNH2. Now what is the reaction? Na plus and Br minus out as NaBr. NH2 minus and one of the hydrogen out as ammonia. And what do you get is CH triple bond CH. This double bond turn, triple bond. You get CH triple bond CH. You are getting ethyne. Ethyne. This is what the reaction. Not necessarily the second reaction required. You can continuously reflux to get a final product. You can take this and continuous reflux with alcoholic KOH. You can get a alkyne. No problem. But it will be better treating with a second step operation using soda amide will be a better reaction. So reaction from calcium carbide, preparation from calcium carbide, preparation from vicinal dibromide. Okay. There is the two important methods of preparation commented regarding alkyl. Now switching on to properties, most important property is acidic character of alkyl. Acidic character of alkyne. See, the alkyne hydrogen connected to triple bonded carbon seem to have feeble acidic character. The carbon the hydrogen connected to triple bonded carbon seem to have some bit of acidic character. And that is evident from reaction with the metallic sodium or sodium amide. You see the reaction CH triple bond CH. When treated with the sodium amide or sodium in ammonia, you can see there is expulsion of hydrogen giving CH triple bond CNA. You get monosodium acetylite. Monosodium acetylite liberating hydrogen gas. Liberating hydrogen gas. This can again react. This can again react with the metallic sodium. You will get a disodium acetylite. You get a disodium acetylite releasing hydrogen gas. So the expulsion of hydrogen gas indicate the acidic nature of triple bonded carbon connected to that hydrogen. That hydrogen connected to triple bonded carbon seem to be feebly showing acidic character. Because it is highly electronegative carbon. What is the order of electronegativity of carbon atom? Triple bonded carbon with the sp hybridization. More electronegative than double bonded carbon. Double bonded carbon. Which is more electronegative than single bonded carbon. So this is sp carbon. This is sp2 carbon. And this is sp3 carbon. Isn't it? So, sp carbon which is more electronegative to which the connected hydrogen seem to be acidic in nature. It reacts with the metallic sodium liberating hydrogen gas and you get a white precipitate sodium acetylite, monosodium acetylite, then sodium disodium acetylite. Okay. Not only this reaction out of NCRT, this is what given in NCRT. Out of NCRT you can have the reaction. This can be treated with uh, ammoniacal silver nitrate. This can be reacted with uh, ammoniacal silver nitrate. You will be getting silver acetylite. You will be getting silver acetylite, which is also a white precipitate. 
a white precipitate is obtained with the liberation of hydrogen gas. Now, this can be treated with the ammoniacal cuprous chloride. Ammoniacal cuprous chloride. You get a red precipitate. You get a copper acetylide. A red precipitate is obtained. So, sodium acetylide white precipitate. Silver acetylide white precipitate. Copper acetylide red precipitate. All these are expressing the acidic nature of hydrogen. That is connected to triple bonded carbon. Particularly what I mean is terminal alkynes can perform this reaction. Only terminal alkynes. If you take propyne, if you take propyne, you will get similar reaction. But only one step reaction as there is only one acidic hydrogen is present. But you don't get that reaction in 2-butyne. You don't get that reaction in 2-butane as there is no acidic hydrogen. So the reaction is limited to at the same time 1-butane can give. This is 2-butane while this is 1-butane. One 1-butane one can give the reaction. 1-butane can give the reaction as there is acidic hydrogen. So terminal alkynes react with the metallic sodium. Ammoniacal silver nitrate, ammoniacal cuprous chloride, liberating hydrogen gas, showing the acidic nature of triple bonded carbon carrying a hydrogen. And that the reason behind is this one. This is the reason behind. Uh, it, is, it is more electronegative. Triple bonded carbon is more electronegative than double bonded carbon, than single bonded carbon, so on. Hope it is clear. That is acidic nature of alkynes. A very important topic from that area. Then addition reaction. Addition reaction. Addition with the hydrogen. Addition with the hydrogen already explained. Already explained. See alkyne added with the hydrogen. You get alkene from there to alkyne. Alkene. So ethane converted to ethene to ethane. Already explained the reaction in the previous area of discussion. Propyne gives propene, gives propane. Already discussed. Similarly, addition of halogen. Addition of halogen. It may be added with the two molecules of halogen. You get vicinal tetrabromide. You get vicinal tetrabromide. 1 Br2 added to unsaturation. You get 1,2-dibromo. Again, there is unsaturation. Again, Br2 added. You get 1,1,2,2-tetrabromopropane. So, two times halogen is added to the unsaturated system. You get tetrahalo product. Tetrahalo product is obtained. Hope it is clear. Right. Once again, it is a test for unsaturation to the similar to the previous uh, reaction commented in alkene. It gives a reddish orange color decolorized. The reddish orange color of bromine gets decolorized. That's a test for unsaturation. Okay. Next is addition of hydrogen halide. Addition of hydrogen halide similar to alkenes, but occurs two times. It occurs two times. Suppose we take propyne, CH3, C triple bond CH, added with HBr. According to Markovnikov rule, H plus Br minus, Br minus will be connected to the middle carbon and you get CH3, CBr, triple bond turn double bond. You get this. According to Markovnikov's rule. Once again, a molecule can be added. This may be added again with HBr. H plus Br minus. Br minus comes on this carbon. And you get CH3. C, Br, Br, CH3. You are getting a gem dihalide is obtained. Gem dihalide is obtained. Hope it is perfect. Two time HBr added. According to Markovnikov rule, you are getting gem dibromide, for example, propyne. 
first one bromine added coming on the second carbon and again bromine coming on the same second carbon according to Markovnikov rule you get 2 2 dibromopropane as the final product addition of HBr is it clear now <clears throat> next is an important one addition of water addition of water see the addition of water there is something to be taken care of suppose we are adding ethane with the water ethane added with the water the reaction happens in sulfuric acid medium with the mercuric salt as a polarizing agent now you see what happens h plus oh minus either way it can be added hydrogen coming here oh coming here what do you get ch2 double bond choh this is what you are getting now this undergo a equilibrium change i think all of you remember what this change is actually this hydrogen migrate to this position you get ch2 becoming ch3 and this double bond when pi bond shifted between carbon and oxygen you get single bond cho you turn the molecule out to be ch3 cho this is what the very famous uh, equilibrium isomerism isomerism exhibited under dynamic equilibrium what is that called exactly totomerism totomerism this is called a totomerism an isomerism exhibited under dynamic equilibrium by the 1 3 migration of hydrogen atom this is called a keto form and this is called a enol form and major quantity will be keto form and the product point is ethyne ethyne upon hydration you get uh, this product i'm sure all of you know this product is called uh, ethanol ethyne gives ethanol so ethyne undergoing hydration you get uh, ethanol meanwhile higher alkynes will give you ketones higher alkynes will give you ketones why the higher alkyne giving ketones very simple to understand ch3 c triple bond ch a higher alkyne treated with the water in presence of sulfuric acid with the mercuric salt you see h plus oh minus oh minus coming to this carbon and what happens you get ch3 coh double bond ch2 hydrogen comes over this carbon and uh, this triple bond turn double bond you get uh, once again enol you get uh, enol now it undergo a totomeric change this hydrogen migrating to this carbon and this double bond migrating to carbon oxygen you are getting ch3 co ch3 that is acetone propanone you get propanone ketone again keto enol isomerism so ethane gives ethanol propane gives propanone butane gives butanone pentane pentanone hexane hexanone cyclohexane cyclohexanone any higher alkyne gives ketones while first alkyne gives aldehyde is that clear and of course as we were discussing in case of alkenes there is polymerization reaction observed in alkynes there is polymerization observed in alkyne there is a special type of polymerization that is called a cyclic polymerization there is cyclic polymerization given by alkynes for example three moles of ethane three moles of ethane react when passed through red hot iron tube red hot iron tube when acetylene gas passed through three moles of acetylene react to get benzene that is a cyclic trimerization reaction molecule one interact with the molecule two interact with the molecule three and there is cyclic trimerization this triple bond one bond is introduced between this carbon atom 
this triple bond one bond is introduced between this carbon atom and one bond is introduced between this carbon atom leading to the formation of benzene you get a benzene so cyclic trimerization of ethyne you get a benzene okay there is a previous entrance examination question so cyclic trimerization of ethyne you get a benzene what about if it is propyne suppose propyne undergo cyclic trimerization what will be the product obtained see ethyne gives benzene in such a scenario if propyne react what is the product obtained i am leaving to you i am leaving to you to think and find out if ethyne cyclic trimerization you get benzene then propyne cyclic trimerization what will be the product obtained that's an important reaction from alkynes so structural details of alkynes preparation of alkynes most importantly most importantly acidic nature of alkynes is it clear about this question i am leaving to you you please try to figure out what will be the answer okay next is aromatic hydrocarbons arenes aromatic hydrocarbons also called arenes right benzene and related compounds that is the next one aromatic hydrocarbons the basic popular compound is all of you know benzene benzene is the fundamental most popular system c6h6 which is aromatic compound we represent as arh it is represented as arh or it is represented as phh like that right phenyl ring benzene ring ar aryl ring like that c6 h6 benzene you need to review through the structural details of benzene now benzene non benzenoid compounds these are all benzenoid compounds benzene toluene naphthalene biphenyl all of you know while propolon is an example for non benzenoid compound tropon tropolon this is tropon this is tropon tropon is aromatic in nature but it is a non benzenoid aromatic compound while all these are benzenoid aromatic compounds tropon is a non benzenoid aromatic compound okay various related uh, examples and nomenclature which you can go through molecules like toluene xylene orthoxylene metoxylene paraxylene structural details of benzene kekule structure of benzene benzene giving two resonating structures and that is represented like this kekule structure of benzene see in benzene molecule we can see the six carbon atom making sp2 hybridized each carbon atom is making sp2 hybridized if you take one carbon atom one sp hybridization over here binding with the hydrogen one sp hybridization with the next carbon one sp2 hybridization with the third carbon so it undergo sp2 hybridization three hybrid orbital one bind with the hydrogen one bind with the this carbon one bind with the this carbon and there is a p orbital which is free of bonding which will be bonded for pi bonding that will involved in pi bonding lateral overlapping so it can be a pi bonding between these two p orbital a pi bonding between these two p orbital a pi bonding between these two p orbital across the six carbon carbon ring and that pi bonding can happen in two different ways and that lead to the resonance that lead to the resonance condition very simple to understand you look at the two diagrams these two diagrams will illustrate clearly how the two resonating conditions are um, established in benzene ring i'll take it uh, separately so that
you see the two structures the two structures to understand you see the labeled carbon atom the labeled carbon atom one the labeled carbon atom 1 2 3 4 5 6 you can see in the structure 1 the structure 1 the p orbital of 1 and 2 carbon atom make a pi bond then 3 and 4 carbon atom make a pi bond then 5 and 6 carbon atom make a pi bond leading to such a lewis electron structure now coming to the next one you can see the pi bond is formed between 2 and 3 carbon atom there is a pi bond 4 and 5 there is a pi bond 6 and 1 there is a pi bond so that means there is alternate availability of pi bonds in two different forms of representing structure which all of us know it is called a canonical forms resonating structures or canonical forms so one structure if it is like this one structure will be like this they are called a canonical structures all of us are very much familiar drawing the canonical structure of benzene one we draw like this and the one we draw like this these are the two canonical forms resonating structures of benzene and this is resonance hybrid this is resonance hybrid resonance hybrid structure so which is the real structure these two are non real structures and that is the real structure and real structure electronic distribution in benzene ring beautifully demonstrated in the ncert you can see this is the real structure this is the real structure of benzene ring the pi bond is equally available in all the six positions of carbon carbon and you can see there is a symmetrical electron cloud available across the carbon carbon planar system inside a benzene ring and that is the structural entity of benzene kekule structure that we learn most important regarding the aromatic system one of the most popular aromatic system all of you know it is benzene and of course a discussion coming what is aromaticity how do you understand aromaticity that is an important topic how do you understand aromaticity that is an important topic from the chapter so let me tell you what is meant by aromatic what is meant by anti aromatic anti aromatic and what is meant by non aromatic so there are three types of systems organic molecules aromatic anti aromatic non aromatic we don't have to learn about anti aromatic systems and all but i'm explaining from the competitive point so aromatic means the molecule should be cyclic the molecule should be planar the molecule should be conjugated and the molecule should be completely delocalized completely delocalized what is meant by delocalized the electronic system keep on jumping from resonance resonance complete resonance and the molecule having 4n plus 2 pi electron 4n plus 2 pi electron where n is equal to 0 1 2 3 etc and that is known as huckel's rule huckel's rule huckel's rule so any molecule which is cyclic planar completely conjugated completely delocalized having 4n plus 2 pi electron is called aromatic right this huckel's rule is limited to simple molecular system not necessarily always in bigger molecules you find huckel's rule is satisfied not necessarily so any such system will be aromatic is expected to be aromatic or what is anti aromatic anti aromatic once again it will be cyclic in nature it will be planar in nature it will be 
conjugated in nature, but it contains four n pi electrons. Four n pi electrons, where n is equal to one, two, three, four, etc. That means pi electrons will be n equal to 1, 4 pi electron, n equal to 2, 8 pi electron, 12 pi electron, 16 pi electron, 20 pi electron. This is going to be anti-aromatic in nature. What about aromatic? What about aromatic? N can be 0. So the pi electrons can be n is equal to 0, 2 pi electron, n equal to 1, 6 pi electron. N equal to 2, 10 pi electron. N equal to 3, 14 pi electron. N equal to 4, 18 pi electron. N equal to 5, 22 pi electron. Such electronic systems are aromatic. So 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22 expected to be aromatic. While 4, 8, 12, 16, 12 expected to be aromatic provided it is cyclic planar conjugated system. Right? So this is anti-aromatic, this is aromatic. While others are called non-aromatic. Other than, other than these two categories, you can call it as non-aromatic. For example, if you take a system, if you take a system like this, with uh, a positive center, you can see there are two pi electrons. You can say it is aromatic in nature. This is aromatic in nature. Meanwhile, if you take a system like this, where there is a minus charge, means there is a pair of electron, two electron here and two electron here, it is four electron system and that turn anti-aromatic. This is anti-aromatic. So this is aromatic, this is anti-aromatic. Meanwhile, if you take a molecule like this, this is non-aromatic. Non-aromatic. Why this is non-aromatic? There is, why this is non-aromatic? This one carbon, it is sp3 carbon and is expected to be out of the play. Hope you understand. sp3 carbon will be dangling in character. So, we can't expect a complete delocalization in that system. So, this is having two electron system, two pi electron system, completely conjugated aromatic. This is four electron system, planar system, which is anti-aromatic, while this is non-aromatic. Similarly, the simple molecule benzene, when you take, quite simple to understand, 2 plus 2 plus 2, it is 6 pi electron system which is aromatic in nature, all of us know, all of us know. The very popular tropelium cation, this is tropelium cation. Tropelium cation is a typical example of aromatic system where you have 2 plus 2 plus 2, 6 pi electron system and it is aromatic. Like that. So you need to practice at least some 30-35 examples for aromatic, non-aromatic, anti-aromatic systems. A molecule like this will be anti-aromatic in nature, cyclic, planar, conjugated, having four pi electron system. It is anti-aromatic in nature. Right? There are certain molecules, there are certain molecules which seem to be anti-aromatic, but not actually. You see, cyclo octa tetra in cyclo octa tetra in contain 1, 2, 3, 4 pi electron means 4 pairs, 8 pi electron system. 8 pi electron system, this is expected to be anti-aromatic. It is expected to be anti-aromatic, but not. It is a molecule which is non-planar, giving a tub-shaped molecule. This is giving a tub shaped molecule. That means it is not a planar system and is experienced to be non aromatic system. Non aromatic in nature. It all depends on its relative stability, heat of hydrogenation data, etc. But we are trying to make a generalization giving certain rules and regulations. There are a lot of molecules which may not be uh, holding good on these conditions. 
So we have to practice as many examples as possible. And when we practice, we will come across certain exceptional cases like this. You see the molecule is cyclic. It seems to be drawn planar, conjugated. Everything is perfect. Having 8 pi electron system, 2, 2, 2, 2. 8 pi electron system and is expected to be anti-aromatic. But actually when we experience its relative stability and heat of hydrogenation, it doesn't match with anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatics are highly reactive. The order of reactivity, anti-aromatic, non-aromatic, uh, aromatic generally, generally, anti-aromatics are highly reactive, least stable. But we don't that find that character suited for this molecule. When we, ex when we investigate, we find that it is having a different uh, non-planar geometry. Hope you understand. So what is aromatic, anti-aromatic, non-aromatic? Aromatic means cyclic planar conjugated 4n plus 2 pi electron system cyclic planar conjugated 4n system is anti-aromatic others are called non-aromatic is it clear right now on to preparation of benzene there are few reactions commanded one is cyclic polymerization of ethene few minutes back in the topic alkynes we had a talk on cyclic, cyclic trimerization of uh, ethane. Cyclic trimerization of ethane. We have discussed it here. You see, cyclic trimerization of ethane, you get a benzene. Already we have discussed that context. Second one, decarboxylation of aromatic acid. This is also a taught or discussed area. There will be Na2CO3 out. Na2CO3 out and you get benzene. So using soda line, sodium salt of carboxylic acid treated with the soda line, we get uh, alkenes. That is the one reaction. Okay. So these are the two reactions commended. There is one more reaction, it seems, from phenol. Preparation from phenol. Reduction of phenol. Phenol treated with the zinc dust. Phenol treated with zinc dust, zinc will remove oxygen. Zinc oxide is out and you get a benzene. Right? So these are the three methods commented for the preparation of benzene. Okay? Now, the final topic in the chapter is the chemical properties, chemical reactions of benzene. Benzene typically giving the reaction is electrophilic substitution reaction. The typical reactions given by benzene is electrophilic substitution reaction. Electrophilic substitution reactions. That is the typical reactions given by benzene. ESR reactions. Right? They are few important examples halogenation nitration sulfonation friedel craft alkylation acylation like that these are the important reactions given by benzene ring suppose we are taking benzene suppose we take up benzene benzene treated with the chlorine benzene treated with the chlorine With uh, an, an a Lewis acid, anhydrous AlCl3, benzene treated with the chlorine in presence of anhydrous aluminium chloride. All of you know aluminium chloride is electron deficient and act as a Lewis acid. So what happens is ClCl, the Cl minus is withdrawn by AlCl3 and you get Cl plus. And that Cl plus is attacked by chlorine. And what do you get? You get an intermediate. You get an intermediate like this. This is hydrogen, this is chlorine and you get an arenium cation like this. You get an arenium cation like this. So actually there are three steps involved. Step 1, formation of electrophile. This is formation of electrophile. Step 1. Step 2, attack of, this is step 2. This is step 2. Attack of electrophile by benzene ring, you get a 
arenium intermediate arenium i cation intermediate now the step 3 removal of proton step 3 removal of proton this hydrogen removed as h plus reinstating the aromaticity for the moment that carbocation is not aromatic now it reinstate the aromaticity you get chlorobenzene i will repeat formation of electrophile step one attack of electrophile by benzene ring giving arenium cation step two which momentarily loses aromaticity and now the deprotonation removal of proton Re reinstating the aromaticity in the ring giving chlorobenzene this is electrophilic substitution reaction of benzene every electrophilic substitution reaction of benzene involved these three steps let us examine the nitration of benzene this is treated with a concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid when these two involved, you are getting the electrophile NO2 plus and that is attacked by the benzene ring. And you get nitrobenzene. The rest mechanism is quite same. You get nitrobenzene. There are also three steps. Formation of electrophile, attack of electrophile giving arenium cation, removal of H plus. Same dicto procedure. So this is called halogenation. This is called the nitration. Halogenation involves halogen with the Lewis acid. Nitration involves concentrated nitric acid with the concentrated sulfuric acid called the nitration mixture. Nitration mixture. Now another reaction, sulfonation reaction. This is treated with the fuming sulfuric acid. It is treated with the Fuming sulfuric acid which is able to release SO3 act as electrophile. SO3 attacking on the benzene ring and you get benzene sulfonic acid. The result is SO3H. You get benzene sulfonic acid. So here you get chlorobenzene, here you get nitrobenzene and this is benzene sulfonic acid. Benzene sulfonic acid benzene sulfonic acid that is sulfonation reaction here the electrophile is here the electrophile is halonium ion chloronium ion here the electrophile is nitronium ion and here the electrophile is neutral one so3 sulfur trioxide okay next is friedel craft alkylation reaction this is treated with a CH3Cl and uh, aluminium chloride, anhydrous aluminium chloride. Similar to what happened here, you have CH3 plus Cl minus withdrawn by this. You are getting CH3 plus act as electrophile and the result will be toluene. You are getting toluene. Let me remind you, all this reaction involved three steps. What are the three steps? What are the three steps? Formation of electrophile. Attack of electrophile by the benzene ring giving arenium car carbocation. Removal of proton giving aromaticity back to the ring. Final forming, final product. Okay. So chlorination, nitration, sulfonation. This is Friedel-Craft alkylation. Friedel-Craft alkylation. Very, very popular reaction. Friedel-Craft alkylation. Okay. Another reaction is friedel craft acylation. It is treated with the CH3COCl and AlCl3. You see this Cl minus again withdrawn by AlCl3. You get acyl carbocation and the product obtained is a ketone. You get an aromatic ketone. Acetophenone is the product. Acetophenone. That is the product and that is friedel craft acylation. friedel craft acylation reaction. So, chlorination reaction, nitration reaction, friedel craft sorry, sulfonation reaction, friedel craft alkylation, friedel craft acylation. Here, the electrophile is 
here the electrophile is chloronium, here nitronium, here SO3, here alkyl group is electrophile, here acyl carbocation is the electrophile, right? So halogenation, nitration, sulfonation, friedel craft alkylation, friedel craft acylation. Is it clear? Right. Now benzene can be treated for reduction upon upon exhaustive condition you can reduce uh, benzene with uh, hydrogen excess hydrogen with uh, ex 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 excessive conditions of catalytic and temperature conditions h2 with nickel under vigorous condition heating you can get all the three bond getting saturated you are getting cyclohexane you get cyclohexane excessive hydrogen with the catalyst and a vigorous condition now even this reaction you can conduct excessively you see you are taking excess of chlorine with the alcl3 you can get a hexachlorobenzene all the hydrogen atom replaced by chlorine all the hydrogen atom replaced by chlorine you get c6 cl6 c6 cl6 exhaustive halogenation that can be done or at times there is another reaction this benzene treated with the chlorine in presence of light this treated with the chlorine in presence of light or heating excessive you get another important product that is very popular there the chlorine is getting added there the chlorine is getting added across the double bond you get a molecule like this this is called a bhc benzene hexachloride it is c6 h6 cl6 that is the molecule bhc benzene hexachloride benzene hexachloride popular known as gamaxine popular known as gamaxine gamaxine it is also called a lindane gamaxine lindane sometimes called a triple six a very popular insecticide material that is obtained by chlorine addition across the carbon carbon double bond you get a double bond saturated with the chlorine c6 h6 cl6 so variety of such reactions are given by the aromatic compound benzene is it clear now to wind up the topic very important one the directive influence of existing group the directive influence of existing group for example suppose suppose we have the compound say phenol suppose we have the compound say phenol that is already OH group is there and you are trying to chlorinate is Cl2 with uh, AlCl3. So the new electrophile that is Cl plus, the new electrophile that is Cl plus, you can understand that will be directed by this group. This group is called a host group. The host group directs and this group is called a guest group. The guest group is directed by the host group and that is called a directive influence of the existing group. A group like OH, a group like NH2, a group like CH3, all activating groups usually work as orthopara directing in nature. They work as orthopara directing in nature. Suppose it is OH group, you can see the electron density at ortho para positions are much greater and there actually the electrophile is getting connected we call it as ortho para directive ortho para directive the product obtained is ortho para product you can get oh group here chlorine comes here and you can get the oh group and chlorine coming at para position Normally, para product will be major product. So, you get a mixture of ortho para product, at times multi substituted product. Anyway, the new group is introduced at ortho para positions. 
and that is directed by the existing group and such groups are called activating group ortho para directing group a group like oh group a group like nh2 group a group like or group a group like cs3 group etc they all having plus i effect no dominating plus r effect dominating they are activating groups and ortho para directive in nature meanwhile if you take an example of nitrobenzene suppose you take an example for nitrobenzene the nature of nitro group is just opposite this is deactivating group deactivating group as it is having minus i effect and minus r effect therefore it is meta directing in nature it is meta directing in nature imagine you have an electrophile it is preferably attacking over here number 1 attacking tendency is less number 1 attacking tendency is less if it attack it attack at meta position and you get only one product that is meta substituted product is obtained you have no2 here and chlorine coming here you get meta substituted product right so normally activating groups are ortho para directing deactivating groups what are the deactivating groups no2 group is deactivating cho deactivating cn deactivating co deactivating cooh deactivating lot many lot many deactivating groups are there they are all meta directing in nature meanwhile if you take halogen imagine there is one halogen present for example we are considering chlorine please understand chlorine is basically slightly deactivating it is slightly deactivating why it is slightly deactivating all of us know chlorine is highly electronegative so it will have a tendency to pull the electrons so it is having minus i effect it is having minus i effect and slightly deactivating but it is ortho para directing in nature it is ortho para directing in nature because it has got a plus r effect i effect is minus r effect is plus due to the lone pair of electron present these are some important points at the uh, end portion of the chapter the directive influence of existing group which is well explained in the textbook over the end portions you can find the directive influence of existing group look at that oh group oh group is activating group ortho para directing and is well explained with the resonating structures how it is activating how it is ortho para directing in nature you see the electron density at ortho para positions increases due to the plus r effect of oh group electron density at ortho para position increases so the electrophile preferably come and attack there clear what about electron withdrawing group what about electron withdrawing group like a nitro group what is happening with the nitro group with the nitro group there is an opposite effect you see there is minus r effect due to minus r effect at ortho position you can have plus so there is the electron deficiency in the ortho para position so normally the reactivity is suppressed if it react it will be attacking at a meta position only where there is no positive charge is it clear and finally you can find in the textbook some poly aromatic rings the highly toxic cancer causing chemicals of course important biologically and uh, uh, industrially many important compounds they are poly aromatic ring compounds and their characteristics are explained just to go through just to get a familiarity that's all and that is the 
portion hydrocarbons the chapter of hydrocarbons so we were having a detailed look at the various hydrocarbons in particular a talk on alkane alkene alkyne benzene in each case preparation properties etc alkanes preparation and properties exclusive talk on conformations alkenes exclusive talk on cis-trans isomerism preparation and properties alkynes preparation and properties a talk on acidic nature of triple bonded carbon with hydrogen Hydro acidic nature of hydrogen with the triple bonded carbon and now um, aromatic compounds aromaticity aromaticity and the aromatic aromatic and the aromatic non-aromatic huckles rule various electrophilic substitution reactions of benzene there we conclude the chapter we will meet with uh, another class with another chapter okay till then bye take care study well see you